Hi, Shannon. I, I was about to introduce you uh, and I was sharing with everyone that the last time we had a group call with Chris Benjamin, uh, oh, he nice. was coaching us on how to prepare to post. And now I want to introduce you, Shannon, who's absolutely guru uh, and a pro with Instagram marketing. So we, I wish you can um, coach us, uh, train us, share your experience with Instagram, how you became such successful uh, through Instagram marketing. So I'm um, giving the mic to Shannon. Shannon, take, take the audience. Okay, awesome. Um, I don't really have like a slideshow presentation or anything like that. So I'm happy to just talk and, um, and then do more Q and a and answer like specific qu questions that you guys have. Um, sure. but my name's Shannon Mangin. If you guys don't follow me, I'm on Instagram at Mangin team. I can actually just drop that into the chat here. Um, Okay. I recognize Anthony. I'm like, I do know someone. I wasn't sure who all I would know in, in this coaching group. I don't know if I've met all of you yet, um, but I, I run a team with just my husband. So it's just the two of us. Hey, Anthony. Uh, I run a team with my husband in Austin, Texas. I've been an agent since 2017. And then my husband joined me in 2020, like right before everything shut down, <laughs> he quit his job and joined me. Um, and I, Honestly, that's when I kind of started getting into Instagram more was um, after the, the market just crashed and we were kind of forced to shut down for a while. Um, I was trying to find ways of just like, how do I connect with people? Because I was relying heavily on listings and open houses. And all of a sudden in March of 2020, I lost all my listings. All my clients were like, whoa, we don't want our house you know, on the market right now. Um, we couldn't do open houses. And so we were at a point of like, well, how are we going to meet people and talk to people? And so my coach at the time was like, okay, focus on a skill that you can do and just, you know, get through this. We thought it was only gonna be like two weeks, but she's like, just plow through this, build a skill, and then you'll come out stronger on the end. So I decided I was going to focus more on Instagram. I've been using it like since 2018, I did have a business account, but I was just posting like pictures only and and most a lot of like clip art you know I, I paid a guy actually to get me little templates that I was proud of at the time that was like just sold with my little realtor pose you know like that and that was pretty much all my Instagram page looked like um and so in 2020 I was like well I, I need to start doing more video because that's what Tom's always saying and so I just started kind of small I know some people jump in and they're like I'm gonna do 60 videos in 60 days or whatever I I'm like, I can't do that. <laughs> I, I was just like, it's overwhelming. So, and I was teaching myself how to edit a video because the reels were not a thing. It was like IGTV, which is like longer YouTube style. And so I was like, I'm just going to try like one video a week. And I was trying to like train myself on how to do the editing and whatever. Um, and my first videos were absolutely horrific. Looking back now, I showed one to my new coach and he was just like, oh my God, like it was completely different than what I would do now. Um, but just by starting somewhere, just with, like with my first little market updates, like I got, you know, tons of likes, lots of comments because I was doing something different. And my friends and family that were following me were like, oh, like, hey, cool, you did a video. And, and so I realized I'm like, okay, there's something to this. I need to start doing more. And so when Reels came out, I think it was like uh, August of 2020, that's where I kind of found like a, a, something that I loved because it was, you know, short, simple. I didn't have to worry about editing and doing all this stuff. It was like, I could throw together a reel pretty quickly um, and have fun and kind of bring out more of my personality, throw in music, like all kinds of stuff and just have fun with it. Um, and so then I started posting probably three to four videos a week. Uh, just the shorter reels mixed in with pictures and stuff like that. And then I would say like, at that point, kind of my engagement and my followers took off. Um, this year so far, we've closed 158,000 in GCI just through Instagram directly um, with like more in the pipeline and stuff. So it is actually like one of our bigger lead pillars. Um, and we do, you know, other things as well, but that's probably about, I don't know, like uh, almost a, like 30% of our business or so. 
Um, and, and it's a combination of like organic leads that I've never met, like random strangers that find us it's agents following us that are giving us referrals. Um, it's people I know that I started following like my neighbors, my family members, past clients, whatever, anyone that I know, I follow them. They usually follow back. And so sometimes I will get referrals and listings from my sphere, but it's because they're seeing me on an almost daily basis on Instagram. Um, trying to think what else I, I just did a little interview with Jason Pantana. I don't know if y'all got to see any of that. Um, but I can share a few things that kind of helped me like transform my page where I would say it became like more of a lead source for me. Um, I actually hired a blogger at the end of 2020 to help like audit my page. Um, because I felt like, okay, I'm onto something like I'm doing pretty good with these videos. I'm getting likes and stuff, but I was like, I'm not really getting leads and I'm not like doing deals from this. Um, so I hired a blogger that was just like a local Austin food blogger that I, I like watching all the Austin restaurants. And I saw that she kind of made a different page that was about how to be an Instagram influencer. And, and she was offering coaching sessions. So I paid her um, a good chunk of change to look at my account and my question to her, because she's a local Austinite, I was like, if you found my real estate page, would you hire me to be your realtor? And I paid her like $1,200 to kind of look through everything. And she came back and she's like, nope, I would not hire you. And I was like, okay, why? <laughs> you know, I could just pay you a thousand dollars or so. And so she basically told me, she's like, your account is very self-centered. It's all about you. I don't get like who you are. I don't really get your personality a whole lot. It's just, it's all about you. And um, she's like, I don't know what's in it for me. And so she's like, so I don't know. You just, you, you kind of fall into like all the other realtors that I'm seeing. And I was like, okay, so help me. Like, what do I do? I mean, once she kind of broke it down for me, I'm like, okay, I get it. Cause it was more like me, like, look, I just sold the stuff. And now I was doing it to fund music instead of just the clip art. It, but it was still like, I sold a house. I did this. I ate lunch. I went here, you know, and it was still kind of like an all about me show. And so she's like, you need to, first of all, define like, who is your audience? And, and so she started just asking me questions. She's like, where do you even live? Like what part of Austin? And I was like, well, I'm out towards Lakeway. And she's like, oh my God, I don't even think of that as being Austin because she lives, I'm like 45 minutes or 40 minutes West of Austin. I still have an Austin address, but I'm like right on the border of Lakeway, Lake Travis. And she lives like 25 minutes to the East side. So we were over an hour from each other. Um, and I don't think people realize how big Austin is, but it's huge. And so she was like, do you, would you even want to drive over here? Do you sell a lot in this part of town? And I, I was like, well, not really. Like most of our sales are out in the suburbs. We work more like Lake Travis, Stripping Springs, all that stuff. And she's like, I don't get that at all from your page. And she's like, are you trying to sell everything? You know, cause my, my account was like, I serve Austin. And, and she's like, are, would you rather have clients out towards where you live? And I was like, well, in an ideal world, I would rather have clients closer to home. And she's like, are you trying to get buyers or sellers? And I was like, ideally more sellers, but that want to like upsize or downsize in the same area. And so she kind of worked through all these little like questions about who is my audience. Okay. So I'm, I now have it clearly defined. Like I'm trying to find a homeowner in the, you know, the hill country part of Austin that is wanting to upsize, downsize, transition to their next home. So once I have that person in mind, it is way easier to come up with topics that appeal to that person. Because then I can brainstorm, okay, what is a homeowner who wants to upsize or downsize actually want to know about? In the past, I was just doing like random stuff. Like I was following other agents and if they were like, oh, should you rent or should you own? Like I was posting about that. Why would I post that if my ideal client already owns a house and they own like a nicer home? Some of them probably own two houses. You know, they have a lake house and their normal house. So I'm not going to post like, should I rent or, you know, stop renting, whatever. Here's how do you, you know, what's an FHA loan? How do I get down payment assistance? That's not my ideal client. Not that I wouldn't help someone, but it's like, I'm not marketing to that person. So the stuff that I started um, 
posting about as far as like video topics are, okay, you want to upsize your home, but you don't want to upsize your mortgage payment. You want to move, but you don't want to move twice. Um, you know, just how much it can't have you, do you know how much equity you have and are you leveraging it? You know, so those kinds of questions are going to speak directly like to that person. And I can say like, honestly, I have picked up way more like higher end, um, like listings and buyers by doing that. I, I still will get inbound leads. We do Google ads and stuff. So I occasionally will still get stuff further out East or whatever. And yeah, we'll still help those people. But like, I have definitely grown, um, my following and my clients like out in my ideal area and kind of getting more of the price point that I want to be in, um, just by changing like my focus and knowing that for every post I'm speaking to that person that makes sense <laughs> so far. Um, and, and then like from there, you know, I kind of brainstorm like content buckets. So definitely advice about the market is important, but again, I'm always speaking about it. I'll, I'll speak sometimes from a buyer perspective, but also from a seller perspective, all of my sellers are potential buyers. The reason they're not selling is because they're terrified of like, what am I going to buy? And so I kind of do a balance of both, but typically if you look at my posts, they're going to be about you like selling your home and listing your home and, and, and all that stuff is more aimed on the seller side. Um, so we do market updates. I do, um, I call them inspirational stories. Like I, I want people to feel inspired by like a client, maybe someone just like them that just sold and look at what they got. Or this person had this challenge, but look how we overcame it. Because I want them to feel like, again, it's about them. It's not about, look how great I was. I helped this client get whatever. It's more like meet our newest homeowners. Here's their story. And I'm trying to get more of like my clients talking in the video. So they're speaking as if, you know, they're hopefully someone in my audience is just like them. That's like, oh, I want to do the same thing. Um, and then I do kind of like, more entertaining kind of spoofs on, um, the market and just like stories that have happened. I, I kind of use a lot of trending sounds and stuff just to make it more fun. Um, a tip that, that, that blogger gave me and I, I can, I'll put this in the chat, but she said like to find your style. I thought this was actually helpful because I, my style is definitely more me right now. And I think it's super important, like whatever your style is and your personality that you have to be authentic to yourself. If you're like, I would never do a stupid trendy dance, then don't do it. It's not you. <laughs> but if you're like, that's fun, then do it. And like, you'll attract the people that want to do it. But she gave me two questions, um, to find your style. And the first one is how do you want your ideal client to describe you? and come up with five adjectives. So how do you want your ideal client to describe you? There's no right or wrong. It's literally what you would answer. My answers would be completely different. So, you know, it, it, there's no right or wrong, which is the cool thing. Um, but like for me, I want to be, you know, an expert. I want to be like trustworthy. Um, I'm professional. I don't do cheap cell phone pictures, whatever. Like I do a you know, good job of marketing. I also think we are very down to earth and we care about our clients. So I want that to come through too. And so anytime we're posting a video, it's like, does my video capture that? Is it like professional, but it's fun. I'm, I'm giving expert advice, but like in a fun kind of down to earth way. Um, the second question she said was, um, gosh, how, how do you want your clients to feel when they visit your Instagram page? Which I had never thought about before. Cause again, it was kind of like me just, I, I thought Instagram was just me letting everyone know I was a realtor, <laughs> you know, and kind of marketing myself. But she's like, no, why would they come to your page? Like, what do you want them to feel? So five adjectives that way. How do you want your clients to feel when they visit? Um, and again, no right or wrong. So there's people like Tom Tool, who's very like factual state, you know, kind of straightforward, um, giving lots of data. And then you have people like Zachary Loft that does, or Faust that does like crazy over the top stuff. And both are like amazingly successful. 
very different complete styles, but they, you know, you're going to attract whoever you want. Um, so for me, like I want my clients or anyone visiting my page to always feel like either educated, inspired, or entertained. Um, and I want it to feel like upbeat, you know, as negative and horrible as the market can be. Like, I don't want to be like, oh my God, it's horrible. It's like, okay, this is hard, but look at this person who just won over here. Like, this is rough, but look at how, like, you know, I, I usually try to put a positive spin on everything. Um, and so any video that I make, I'm asking myself, is it, does it inspire, educate, or entertain? Um, and I would describe my style as kind of edutainment, which is like a combination of like, it's educational, but fun. Um, and just kind of like short snackable little pieces of content that someone can like watch and enjoy. Um, I put lots of like fun music and stuff in there just cause that's something I love. Um, but like I said, you can do any kind of style that works for you. And that's the beauty to me of social media is that there's like, not really like one right way of doing it. It's just, as long as you're authentic and as long as you're speaking to your person, your ideal person they'll be attracted to you. Um, questions, comments, <laughs> anything so far? I feel like I'm just talking, talking, talking. Great content so far, Shannon. Okay. Love it. So um, yeah. Yeah, Amy. this is really helpful. Thank you very much for sharing all that so far. Uh, do you have a schedule at this point where you say like Monday, I'm doing something inspirational, Tuesday, I'm, or is it just more random? I, I wish I was that organized. I'm more random. Um, I have gotten better about my schedule. Um, one of my big things I was working on, especially after summit was like time blocking because I, I just like, as we're growing a team and stuff and getting busier, um, I realized like my coach is like, Hey, you need to block out time to actually plan your content. Cause I'm also now I took on YouTube, which is like a whole nother beast. And I've hired a videographer to kind of help me like edit and do these longer things. Cause I am not good at that. Um, but I'm, I, so now on Monday afternoons, I block out like at least an hour where I brainstorm the topics. Like I want to do all these topics. And then Tuesday morning is usually my day where I can go into my little office here. I have it set up with like lights and all kinds of stuff where I can film stuff here. Um, and then my reels are usually just with a ring light, like in different parts of my house or my yard or neighborhood or whatever. Um, and I just kind of jot down like my ideas on Monday, like this is what I want to do. I try to look backwards. This was another tip my coach gave, um, look backwards at the week prior and pull from that. Like what happened to you last week that was like interesting or horrible or amazing. Um, so it could be like, you know, someone lost out because of the higher rates, you know, or maybe you saved someone they thought they could never buy because of the higher rates, but they got a, you know, they were able to buy down points or whatever. So I just jot down like what happened to me, what was like topics people asked me, what did your clients, what did you talk about on the phone when you talk to people? Like all of that can be good topics. So I try to jot down maybe like two or three that are like educational and maybe some of those I can do a longer thing on YouTube. Um, then I look ahead at like, okay, what's happening this week. And I also will try to find times to film stuff as I'm out and about, because like for my Instagram, I like it to feel more like what's happening right now. And I do get people that tell me that like, oh, your stuff's so relevant I don't do as much like the talking head videos where I'm like, what is escrow? What is this? What is that? Like, I, you know, occasionally, but for the most part, it's kind of like a live look at what's happening in the Austin market and like what's happening to us and our clients. And so I kind of come up with that stuff as we go. Um, and so I will look ahead like, okay, if I have clients um, doing a new construction walkthrough, we sell a ton of new construction here. If I just show up 10 minutes early, all I have to do is prop my phone up, you know, or you can bring, I have a little tripod, but you can also prop it up on a, on a windowsill or whatever, and just be like, here's three reasons why you need an inspection at a new construction home, or, 
You will not believe the nightmare of new construction in Austin right now. Guess how long it's taken this client to get sheetrock. I literally have someone that took 18 months for them to get their house sheetrocked. <laughs> like I can't make it up. Um, and so all I have to do is just look ahead and like, okay, I could talk about this or this. I show up five, 10 minutes early. I shoot my little clip and I've captured content. I don't edit it right there. I may not even post it till next week or whatever, but I'm always just like capturing stuff. Um, it could be that we went to like a cool restaurant that we've never tried before. My husband now like understands like the food comes. He's like, okay, I'm not going to touch it. Right. And I'm like, nope. <laughs> and I like film it. And then I'm like, okay, let's stand here. Let's do this. Let's, you know, take pictures. And then I can throw that out on a Friday, like a foodie Friday, you know, here's like the best barbecue restaurant, the coolest sushi place we just found, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, and that way it's not like taking up like hours and hours of time or whatever. Like I can just, I just, while I'm out and about, I'm like, Oh, let's film this. Let's film that. Let's capture that. And just kind of, but I'm being more intentional, um, at closings. I'm really, really trying to get like client testimonials. And so if I have a closing, I put it in the calendar appointment closing for so-and-so ask for a testimonial video. And I will, you know, change up the, the questions based it, but I put it in my calendar block so that when I get there, I don't just, oh, okay, we did closing. And then it's like, oh, darn, I forgot to ask him a question. Like, it's like, I'm getting the reminder as the appointments there. Um, I'm also like, I'm trying to get clients more like interacting in the videos. And so depending on the personalities, um, I will also say like, what's your favorite I want to do a celebration song because I will put together like pictures, video and whatever of the experience, them at the house, doing the walkthrough, happy family in front of it, closing, holding the key, like all this stuff. And I'll put it, put it together into a reel. So I will ask them like, what's your celebration song, like your favorite song. And we're going to put together like a little video. If they are down for it, I'll get them lip syncing it. We'll do like dancing, you know, some kind of thing to make it like fun. And then I can tag them in it. They love it. They share it to all their pages. And then I will pick up like their family, their friends, all the people that they know follow me um, because not many realtors are doing that. And so people are just like, oh, cool. And, you know, and they're, they, they're having fun with it. So it's just a fun thing. So I'm, I'm just more mindful. So it's not awkward <laughs> at the closing table, but I'm just like, hey, I would do these fun reels. Now that I have some, I can send it to them. And most of them follow me anyway. So they're like, yeah, like they're excited for it because they like it. Um, but that's, that's kind of how I, I plan ahead. And, and, you know, that way I don't feel like I'm at a loss of like, oh my God, what am I supposed to be doing? Great. Right. What are some of the questions you ask them? Like at a test for a testimonial, um, I mean, it depends on their story. If it's a first time buyer, what does being a homeowner mean to you? How does it, how does it feel to be a homeowner? What was the experience like working with a management team? Um, if they moved out to one of the little cute towns surrounding Austin, how did you know that Wimberley was the right town for you? How did you pick this neighborhood? Like what made you choose, fall in love with this, you know, whatever. So you can, you can change it up that way. That way it's not always like, what was it like working with Shannon? What was it like working with Shannon? Cause that can, I mean, that would get really old, but just kind of, I don't know, you just change it up. Like what, what do you think was the most interesting thing about this transaction? And then just come up with that question for them. So when you're taking videos and stuff ahead of time, um, how are you um, like organizing that for later use? Like, okay, I'm not going to edit this. I'm not going to do this. Like, I don't know. I always, I don't... Yeah, no, I mean, they're just on my phone. <laughs> organization is okay. not like my biggest skill set, but I, I do that. I don't, it's not like I save it for two months. I mean, it's just more like I'm capturing little stuff and I will edit it. Um, sometimes I also like, for me, this is kind of fun. So I, it's like, it's not like, I'm trying to be a workaholic, but sometimes like, Hey, my husband's like chilling, watching a football game or whatever. I'm like, I'm having fun. I'm playing on my phone. I'm just like editing stuff on the weekend, like just kind of doing my own little thing. Um, and so I just find times where I have downtime. Sometimes we go in on an appointment together and if he's driving and, and it, it kind of works better. Sometimes if we're showing buyers around, I'm like, you drive. And then I'm sitting there in the car and I'm just like editing little stuff and, and then I can post it, whatever. So I'm just trying to find ways where I have some downtime 
sitting in a car, um, you know, whatever, like that I can just edit here and there. But usually if it's on my phone, I try to post it within a week or so. So I'm not like going way, way back. Um, I do have a favorites folder, like for pictures and stuff in particular, like if I have, you know, if we're out at like a park or something, that's just like a beautiful scene in Austin, I will take some of those pictures. And if those could be like kind of evergreen photos, like I could reuse them. I do mark them as favorites. And then I have like a little folder that is kind of like stuff I could pull out of. I call it like my vault of just like, you know, Austin scenery, favorite spots, you know, just that kind of stuff that I've just taken over the years. And, um, whether it's like blue bonnet season or whatever, like, you know, I just have, I have those kind of things saved into a folder. Thanks. Anyone else? <clears throat> so for your like ideal client avatar, do you, have you created more than one or you just, you just go hard on the, the one like seller, like, um, avatar that you've created? Yeah, that's mostly what I'm doing. Like I said, I do talk about buyers too, because the big block is they don't know where, what they're going to buy. So I do, okay. I will occasionally talk about like, Hey, if you're <laughs> just moved to Austin, my mom, my am also trying to attract buyers that want to move here, like from other okay. cities, want to so, be a border. So I do, I don't just do only seller stuff. A lot of it is about transitioning. And sometimes I will say like, oh, okay, so you just sold your home or whatever. It could be a home in California and now they're moving here or whatever. Um, but I, my, I still focus on someone that already has, already has some money. I don't mean it in a bad way, but like they've right. already sold the house. They got good equity and they're coming here. I'm not targeting my first time FHA buyers. Right. So you, ironically- you know. I've actually gotten a bunch and it's, it's just because I have a good following of agents and some of them will reach out and they're like, I know you don't really work with, with like, you know, the, the first time buyers, but could you help my friend? I want to have them work with someone who is successful. And I'm like, of course we'll help them. So I, it's not like you're losing business. And that was one of my fears when she said like niche down, I was like, well, what if I lose business? But I would what? say it's kind of like the opposite, like my business is really boomed. And, um, but you, you know, do, you, so you do have like a specific buyer in mind when you create that kind of content. So it's worth, it's worth making that avatar for, so that you're not just speaking to anyone again, like you're saying that it's more important to be specific with who you're speaking to. Yeah. And, and also just subtle things. Like I used to say, okay, you're, let's say you bought a home that was 400,000. Cause that was kind of what I was selling. Now I'm like, all right, let's say your home's a million dollars. You do this, whatever. I've sold more million dollar homes this year than I ever have. And I'm just like talking about million dollar homes. I'm not going to showcase like we have new construction. I will, you know, try to show like, I mean, I might go into a, like a, I don't know, a, a new construction, like model home. Don't pick the one that's not in the price point in the area that you like, like pick the one that you're like, I want to sell that one go in there. Like our builders are super cool. If we take video and like showcase whatever, like, it, you know, you don't have to worry about getting permission like you would with someone else's listing, but you could do that too. If you don't have new construction, like find listings from other agents and just get their permission. Hey, can I show, I want to do some videos showing what is a million dollars get you or, you know, whatever price point for like 5 million, you know, aim high, you know, just try showing that, talking about it, and you'll start attracting people that have that, uh, that price point. And they're like, oh, okay. Yeah. I am looking for a million dollar home. So, Hi. Yeah. Um, just have a question. Do you use any tool for scheduling a post on Instagram or no, I always post it myself. Um, and I think it's important to like, there is some process involved. Like uh, they, I've heard Jason talk about it and other people calling it like priming your post. So I'll go in there maybe 10 minutes before I'm posting and I will go and like start liking people's stories, um, commenting on people in my feed, whatever. And that makes my account more active and visible. This is what I've been told. <laughs> I'm like, I'm just following like, okay, Jason. I did know that. Um, and then I will post and then I hover. I call it hovering my post for about 10 minutes. And I just try to see like everyone that replies right away or comments or whatever. 
I reply right away because it makes it more active and more likely to get shown. Um, and then, you know, set it aside. Like I might come back at the end of the day and I, I will see like, okay, did anyone else, um, anyone else respond? I might go back and like some of that stuff. And then I also see at the end of the day, like, do I have new followers? And then I'll kind of like reach out and introduce myself to those people. Always? You always do that? Yep. Okay. <laughs> like I said, it's, 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 I just, and I'm only posting right now, like maybe once a day. I know I'm not like crazy doing it three, four times a day. I think if I got to that point, then definitely I'd probably, probably hire someone to do that for me. Um, I have hired a guy since I'm getting onto YouTube. I cannot, I don't have the, like the, the bandwidth or whatever to do all social platforms. And so I've hired a guy um, recently that takes all my Instagram content and then he takes it and puts it onto TikTok and he captures mm -hmm. it and labels it for me. And then he puts it on YouTube shorts. And I don't like check those things. Cause I just, I don't have time to do three. Um, and he'll just tell me, like, if someone messages me, he'll text me like, Hey, you better respond to this person. Cause they sent you a message or like dropped a comment or whatever. And I'm like, Oh, okay. Thanks. And I go in there and I respond. Cause I really don't, I just don't have time to deal with all of it. Yeah. It's pretty time consuming. Um, uh, what about you say, uh, you hire a blogger. Did, does she create also like price for you on a regular basis or that was, no, like that was a kind of a one-time thing I hired her. She was offering what she called an Instagram audit. There are tons of coaches out there. Um, Giselle, you guard you guard is awesome. Um, in Chelsea Pites, I think work together. There's Virginia Kerr is another one that if you're just like, I don't know how to do video very well. Like I've learned a lot just by watching her without necessarily paying for their classes. If you just follow their accounts and listen to what they're saying, like you'll get so much better at speaking on camera and like coming up with better hooks and, you know, just all that kind of stuff. So um, follow some other people that are Instagram influencers and just kind of see they're not realtors, which I kind of like, you know, and they can kind of just help you get better about just coming up with ideas. Okay. Thank you. Um, I was going to say something else. The, the other thing is like, I, I talked about a little bit with the, in the Jason podcast, but introduce yourself to people. I have gotten at least four transactions because I said hello to someone that followed me. And I mean, it sounds so basic, but it's like someone follows you. I try to look at them and I'm, I try to look at like, okay, who is this person? Half of them are Bitcoin. I just, I just block like anyone that's like selling cryptocurrency. I'm like, block, 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 block. And I just, I go through this at the end of the day. I typically don't get like that many followers. After I did the podcast with Jason, I got like a few hundred and I was like, oh my gosh, like I can't, I can't deal with that. But normally I might get like five followers, five to 10 in a day, block out all the junk. Then I look at like, who are these people? If it's an agent or possibly someone that lives here, I just try to look at their profile and see like, do we have anything in common? Then I just introduce myself like, Hey, so-and-so this is Shannon. Thanks for connecting with me. And then I might say like, oh, I see you have, we have mutual friends, like, you know, your friends with so-and-so, how do you know them? You know, just a casual conversation. I'm not like, hey, I'm Shannon, I'm a realtor. Will you sell it? Will you want to buy a house or whatever? Like they know I'm a realtor because they, they saw my account and they followed me. So I'm just saying hello, like I would at a dinner party, like a, you know, a networking event, like meeting someone for the first time. If it's an agent, I, I actually got a, a deal from someone. Uh, she liked one of my videos and put like, haha, and then she started following me. And so I reached out to her and I saw, okay, she's from San Francisco. And so I was just like, oh, hey, you're from San Francisco. We got everyone from San Francisco moving to Austin right now, you know, and it's like it's such a cool city. And um, she replied back. She was like, OMG, I didn't realize you were from Austin. I just liked your video. And she's like, I actually have a good friend of mine moving to Austin right now. Oh, wow. and so we just started like chatting and she sent her friend my video and her friend is like, I'm actually working with them now. I've done three deals with this one person, like repeat business. Um, but her friend is like big on TikTok. <laughs> and so she saw my little page with all my stupid, you know, music videos. And so, and she just like called me the next day. She's like, Oh, my friend, you know, Mariama has just sent me your Instagram and I'm moving to Austin. And, 
if I hadn't said hello, she would have just not, I mean, she just like saw my video in her feed on the explore page and liked it and followed without seeing who I was. Um, um, I've yeah. seen a lot of um, like people that I follow from different kinds of things and there is the real page, but then I keep getting like, hello. And then it's like they follow me. And so I follow them back and I'm like, I thought I already followed this person. And then yeah, one week later, another hello. And then I'm not following them. It's like- There's a scam. It's probably a scammer. Like there, I've actually had a, someone make a Manjin team that just looked just like us with two eyes. Like they, they always like misspell the name or they'll put like a dash or something like that. You can tell if it's a fake account, if all the posts come from the same day. Like if you look on there and it's like, oh, they have a hundred posts and they're all from like November the 7th. Like no, it's not they, there is, it seems like it's the real page, like forever and um, yeah, all their content is there. So I find it, I don't know if it's, they hire someone to possibly do that I, and they're doing yeah. it wrong. I don't, I don't really follow everyone back unless I've like had some kind of meaningful conversation. If it's someone I know, obviously, I mean, I've got probably several thousand agents that follow me. There's no way I can follow all of them back because then my feed would just be chaotic um, so I only follow people. If I know them, we have some kind of meaningful conversation. If I reach out to them, they never even respond back. Like, I'm not going to follow them. I mean, I don't care if they want to watch my page, but it's like, I can't follow you if you don't even talk to me and I don't know who you are very well. Um, but if I can see that someone's like, oh, they're a neighbor, like we're friends with all the neighbors, then I will definitely follow them back and like, hey, it looks like you live here in Sweetwater too. I see you're friends with my neighbors and, um, you know, have conversations with those people. But yeah, sometimes it could be someone's account got hacked and there's yeah. now like a weird person on the other side or whatever. So I just, yeah. Something yeah. weird going on. So I thought that yeah. they were trying to do the same as you're saying, but getting some kind of service from somewhere or something but yeah I, okay. I just to me if they make me feel uncomfortable I just block them I just say trust your gut so <laughs> I don't know yeah. so many weird messages I'm like okay you're out I don't I don't need you Shannon, I have a question for you real quick uh reading the conversation back to where you started that you completely changed your Instagram presence by choosing a niche what kind of tips would you give us to choose the niche to settle on this? Did you look at the transactions or you just went with your gut feeling? How you chose that particular niche? Why didn't you go with luxury or luxury is probably more commission money or yeah. let's say first time home buyers? I enjoy like selling in the area. I do like a geo farm and stuff. And I, I love the area where we live in. I think it's a beautiful part of Texas. Um, I'm not really like in the luxury market selling, you know, $3 million, $4 million lake homes. And for me personally, I'm like, I don't really know if that's even my style. Like I kind of like working with just the, you know, the family similar to us, you know, it's like that you have a nice home. Most of our families are going to be between 35 to 55 or so. They all moved out here because of the schools and they got their kids here and stuff. And it's like, I used to be a teacher. I can relate well to them. Um, and, you know, it's, I just like the area that we're at. Um, and so I, I kind of was like, if I could do more and I, I had had a fabulous deal that year. She, one of the things she asked me, she's like, what was like your favorite transaction that you did? Or like, what, you know, is there like, can you think of an ideal client that you've had or whatever? And there was a family that sold beautiful home in my neighborhood, easy to sell. They shop at Pottery Barn. Everything's like pitch perfect in their house. And it's like, I sold their home in just a few days. Then they bought a bigger house on two acres, just a little further out, um, double the price and wanted like after, again, after COVID, they wanted like room for their kids. They had a third kid. They wanted a pool. They don't want the little community pool. So it was kind of like everyone at that time moving, but that was a huge deal. Cause it's like, I sold one home, which was fairly nice. And I got a second home, like right away, it was like a double ended thing. And I was like, man, if I could do that like 50 times, <laughs> I would be so happy. And it was just like, I sell your beautiful house and buy you an even bigger, newer, beautiful house. And, and so that's kind of where I came from. Um, you know, just thinking that, but, but like I said, my, one of my fears was niching down, like I'm going to lose people, but it didn't actually happen that way. It's like, I gained more people like that 
And I still have agents and stuff like, Hey, I know this might not be what you do, but would you be willing to help my friend? And I'm sure I'm like, sure, we can help, you know? Um, so I haven't lost business. We've gained business and like our sales this year, we've gained almost another 8 million from what we did last year, like in just, you know, in, in commission and volume and stuff. Um, and, and we're still growing, like we still have some stuff pending and whatever. So it definitely has helped a lot. And so if you, you know, if, like for me, minus semi-geographic, I changed instead of serving Austin, I say selling suburban Austin's whole country. And that, if you know, here is like the West side is very hilly and stuff. So we're out by the lakes. Um, you could be a price point. You could definitely be like luxury. If you love first time buyers, if you work with veterans, like um, whatever you wish you could be doing, you know, if you're like, I'm so sick of first time buyers, stop talking to them. Stop, start talking about selling your first home to focus on first time sellers, you know, just change your content to like, I want to get there. And almost by like talking about it, that's where you're going to end up going. Perfect. So just be yourself and make, make content that you feel comfortable and that is naturally matches your personality right yeah and and also like if you're like well I don't know what to start or, or whatever like you do have to consume content to know how to create content I'm doing that right now with YouTube it's been a, a beast to try to tackle but YouTube is very different style and personality than Instagram so I'm trying to like having to go in and like find YouTube channels that I like and like, okay, what are they doing? I had to do the same thing with Instagram. So if you go to your um, Instagram, like at the bottom of the page, uh, there's, if you're just like on your homepage or whatever, there's like a little thing at the very bottom where you can hit reels and then it will just let you like explore reels. And I just will spend maybe I don't know, 15 minutes or something just once a week or so. And I just flip through and I see like, oh, okay, that's a funny sound. I could use it. I save it. And it's like, if I see someone that's doing something hilarious, I'm like, oh, that's awesome. I might be able to put my own spin on it. Um, I follow a lot of non-real estate agents to come up with better ideas because if I can find someone that does something funny, I can take that concept and like apply it to real estate. And it helps my ideas be like a little more fresh and original. Um, so that's something I had to do is also like, kind of see like, what are people doing and what do I think is funny? And, and like, I connect with, okay, follow some of those, save some of those, and then just put my own twist on it. Um, and, and that's like a good place to start. All right, great. Well, any other questions? All right. Well, if no more questions, then I want to. Thank Shannon for spending this 45 minutes with us. I got the whole list Thank of you. my notes. It was very entertaining and educating. Yeah, I know. It's, it's like, like I said, this to me is like fun. I don't really consider it like work. Like, oh, I have to make an Instagram video. I'm like, I'm having fun with it. Right. You know, so like if you can find a way of just having fun with something, like it's, like I said, it, it's, it can turn into a good lead source and stuff, but just, you just have to be yourself and have fun. That's like the main thing. <laughs> I like the lip sync videos from using office quotes and then putting up like the real estate topics yeah. to them. It's so much fun. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to do more like pulling from movies or I don't know, just like other stuff. Right. Right. There's, there's it, a I... lot of, there's a lot of funny quotes that you can, you can make like because it there they happen in real estate those moments where it's like it this so applies yeah so thank you it, i have a quick unrelated question if you guys don't mind i joined kind of at the end is the, i see it's been recorded would it be published to review later it will be published to youtube yes all right awesome thank you don't want to miss whatever you guys talked about all right all right well if we all said no more questions again i want to Thanks, Shannon, for spending time with us. Please follow her, uh, her Instagram in uh, the chat. And um, I'll see you all next Friday, 12 o'clock Eastern. Great. Thank, Thank you. you Thank you. Bye. Good job. Thank you so much. We'll see you guys later.